It's nice when the best time you play is at the gig. Oh, <laughs> uh, so moving right along. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about a little bit about the characters that I chose from uh, what would be great works of literature. Um, when I was a kid, I was in high school. White Station High School of Spartans, class of 90 in the house. Yes. On with Spartan. I had this really um, knowledgeable and very like cougar esque teacher. <laughs> Named Ms. And, and it's unfortunate that we didn't have that terminology in the she, she was the prototypical cougar. She would sit on stage on a, on a, on a little stool, you know, and she'd have skirts just maybe just a little bit inappropriately short for a 49-year-old woman and that's teaching teenagers at the height of their sexual, well, not me, but like other people were definitely at the height of their sexual prowess. Um, I, I mean, I tried, you know, but you know, shot me down. So what are we gonna do? Um, <laughs> so, Miss Wyatt introduced us to, to William Faulkner, and um, you know, a, a lot of my family comes from Oxford, Mississippi, and, um, which is where Faulkner is from. And, uh, I, I read The Sound and the Fury, and I didn't get it at all uh, on the first read. And then I read it again, and then I got into some other things, and I read some of the short stories, and it was always just something that, that really resonated with me. He's like uh, such an um, American archetype, you know, the Southern intellectuals, someone who knows about. Bruce and Chitlins, you know. Yeah. I, I like I like that. Yeah. Really, I like that. So, um, which they go together. I mean, if you ever read some Bruce while eating Chitlins, I mean, it's a revelatory experience. But um, so when I got this project together, I started, you know, sort of sifting through some uh, material and rereading some things. And of course, how you read something at 35 is very different from how it affects you when you're 18. So it's it's good to keep coming back to some of these things as you get older. I find that way with um, a lot of things. Yeah. You know, Coltrane records mean more to me, mean very different things to me now than they did when I was a kid. Yeah. And I just keep coming back to them. Um, so I chose four characters from Faulkner's work. The first one is Benji Thompson from The Sound of the Fury. If anyone have ever read of that, that's the first chapter. It's written by the um, mute, severely handicapped, mentally handicapped son who. Uh, He's kind of frustrated because his sister's sleeping around and she's gonna go away and then he looks at some schoolgirls a long way and they castrate him. So, you know, we've all been there. Um, <laughs> you know. And then from there, we're gonna play, uh, and that's, that song is called Looking All Around. And it's very stream of consciousness and just kind of how that chapter's written. And we're, from, from there, we're gonna move to uh, As I Lay Dying, written from the perspective of the sun whose name is Jewel Bundren, and he's angry for different reasons. His mother's dying, and his brother is uh, making her coffin outside of her window while she's still alive. So that's, you know, kind of idiotic. He's not happy about that. So then we move to uh, one, of, one of my new favorites, which is the, uh, it's called Light in August. And I drew from the char a character named Joe Christmas, who's uh, another conflicted figure. He's... Um, kind of a, a strange take on the Christ archetype. He's a murderer. And he is constantly seeking God's approval, but he's convinced that God hates him. So that's his. It's his tale. And then we sort of wrap it up with uh, uh, Emily Grierson from the short story "A Rose for Emily," who's an interesting woman. She meets a guy. You know, again, we've all been here. You meet a guy, he goes away, and you decide you're going to poison yourself. She winds up not poisoning herself, and then later on, the dude disappears, and then it turns out that the poison was actually for him, and then when she dies, the house smells bad, and they realize that she's been sleeping next to his dead body for the last 40 years. So, um, and again, we've all, we've all been there, we know, we're, we're New Yorkers, it's a New York story, it's, uh, you know... So that's kind of what we're going to do. I'm just going to kind of plow right through. I'm just going to give you a little, uh, 
little, uh, little insight into the things that attract me about literature. <laughs> Oh, that's more of a Staten Island story, Dave <laughs> said, okay. Yeah, well, so yeah. So we're gonna start, this is, this is called Looking All Around. 